In D2L, professors can have content become available or unavailable to students at preset dates at times within a semester. This can be done for anything linked or created in the content area, as well as for discussions, drop boxes, quizzes, and even grade items in the gradebook. In this video, I'll show the basics of visibility control using start and end dates. I'll work with them in the content area since it's a good practice to have all important media and activities linked there. But I'll also discuss some other things you should know about start and end dates across your D2L course space. By default, your course is open to students a few days before the first day of class and close a few days after you submit your final grades for that semester. You can change these dates and whether or not a course is open to students, although as a professor, you always have access to any of your courses. We have another tutorial video available that explains course start and end dates. But more often, you may want modules, files, drop boxes, discussions, and so on to open or close at different times throughout the semester. In another video, we show you how to do this with the draft publish feature in content. But by using start and end dates, you automate this process. That is, you can set these up to govern visibility sometime later in the future, rather than managing visibility manually. It's also important to point out that start and end dates are purely optional. If you do not establish a start or an end date, for any item in your course, that simply means that item is available so long as the course is available to the student. You can also establish start dates, which simply open up an item later than the rest of the course, or an end date, which closes an item down for students before the course end date. We'll start in this module which contains several links that might represent course content and activities for a particular week in this course. We see here a .docx Word document format file, a discussion topic, a Dropbox, and a quiz. The discussion topic has a start date and an end date installed. This means that between these two dates, students will be able to enter, read, and post in this discussion. Before the start date and after the end date, students are unable to post in or even read the contents in this discussion. I'll install a start and end date on this Dropbox and quiz, and then modify the dates on the discussion topic so that they are all three items available on the same week during the semester. To do this, I click Bulk Edit at the top of the module. Under the Dropbox, I click Add Dates and Restrictions. When I click that link, I'm given the option to add a start date, an end date, and some other things. To add a start date, I click Add Start Date, and then use the dropdowns to choose the appropriate date and time that I want. When I've added a start and end date and their times of day, I click the blue update button below and it adds the start and end date for this Dropbox. I'll do the same thing for the quiz. Now I'll modify the discussion topic start and end date to match those I just entered for the Dropbox and the quiz. Since there's already a start and an end date installed, I don't see add dates and restrictions. So I simply click on the existing dates to edit them. When I've made any and all changes to start and end dates in the module, I scroll to the top and click Done Editing, and they're all set. Now, all three of these topics have the same visibility window for students. If I'd subsequently like to edit any of these, I can do so simply by clicking on the existing dates. Here we see the topics in the content area that we were just working with from the student point of view. The student can see them, or at least their titles, and can see the start and end dates, which establish a visibility window. The discussion topic and the Dropbox are not links. The student cannot enter them by clicking them, 
The quiz is a link, and the student can at least go to an informational page, but it's not given the opportunity to start the quiz. In short, the student really can't enter these items and interact with them by taking a quiz, submitting a file, or adding a post. An instructor can also add start and end dates in the editor screens for drop boxes, discussions, and quizzes. But however you add them, they govern these items both in their own areas as well as in content. So as a student, if I go to the discussions area, I do not see at all discussion topic one. In the Dropbox area, I see the discussion, but it's not a link that I can click to enter the Dropbox. And with a quiz, again, I cannot take the quiz. Once the visibility window begins, then I'd be able to interact with these items. There are some important things to know about start and end dates. If a Dropbox discussion or quiz has visibility restrictions established by start and end dates, this hides the contents, but not the title. Students can still see the title in content, and in the cases of Dropboxes and quizzes, they can see the title in the, these respective areas too. To have these kinds of items or topics hidden completely, you need to put the item into a draft state instead of published. It is possible to establish start and end dates on a module in content, and they will govern the contents of that module in the content area. So if I establish start and end dates on this module, it will mean that within the content area, this file, discussion topic, Dropbox, and quiz will be unavailable to students except insofar as they can see the titles of these items. But this is only in the content area. For things that only appear to students in content, such as files or surveys, like this Word format document, setting visibility restrictions on the parent module works well. If I had multiple files in this module, they would all be governed by the restrictions attached to the week one module. But while such restrictions at the module level will govern Dropbox's discussions and quizzes as they appear in content, these items will still be openable and usable by students in their own areas if they do not have their own start and end dates. So as I've done in this example, you should establish visibility restrictions, start and end dates on individual Dropbox's discussions and quizzes so that if a student goes, for example, to the Dropbox area, the Dropbox is governed by its own set of visibility restrictions that mean both in the content area and in this area, it's only available for a certain window of time. In the grades area, it is possible to establish visibility restrictions on gradebook items. I can edit the grade item, and under restrictions, I have the possibility of a start and end date. But it's important to remember that in D2L, gradebook items are separate entities from the Dropbox's discussions or quizzes to which they are potentially attached. So start and end dates installed on grade items like this one do not govern the visibility of those activities, such as the Dropbox that it's attached to over in the Dropbox area. It's the same situation going in the other direction. If I establish visibility restrictions on this Dropbox, its attached grade item in the grades area could still be visible to students if I don't establish visibility restrictions on this grade item. Practically, there aren't a lot of reasons to establish visibility restrictions on grade items, so most instructors probably won't bother doing that. It is available, though, if you need it. One last tip. If you have a lot of start and end dates, and for that matter, due dates, in your courses, you might find the Manage Dates tool useful. To reach it, I click Edit Course, and then I find it under Site Resources. See our tutorial video on how to use this tool if you're interested.